the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born, not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word came, became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen His glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. I strengthen my redeemed. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. It's so good to see you all here today. We welcome you all with all of our hearts to the moon. You know, it's been such a gift to experience the celebrations here in our church around the time of Christmas. What a joy it was to see the children's pageant, to sing Christmas carols, to hear the story of Christmas through the eyes of Luke and Matthew, and gathering in community to rejoice, knowing that Christians around the world are doing the same. Christmas is truly a special time, isn't it? But come on, let's be honest with ourselves. Given that we're not in church all the time, we live in a culture which has thoroughly commercialized the season of the year. So how many of you, I don't want you to raise your hands, but how many of you wake, honestly wake up the day after Christmas and think, I am so glad Christmas is over. <laughs> Do you sort of dread next August when Christmas decorations will start to appear on store shelves? The build up of advertising as the months progress until December. When a Santa starts to show up in every major store, willing to bring your kids anything they want, regardless of what you can afford. I have to admit, every year I have to combat these cynical thoughts and feelings. But the memory of an experience I had a few years ago helps me put that in perspective. It happened while I was doing an internship for becoming a deacon, and I went to a retirement home just before Christmas to conduct a service for the residents. Being a retirement home, of course, all the folks who came to the service were older, and just before the service started, I overheard some of them talking about how awful it is that Christmas has become so commercialized. They seemed really upset and angry. Suddenly it struck me how sad it was that this group of people, many nearing the end of their lives, were actually missing the joy of what even might be the last Christmas for, them, for some of them. They held a, quite a negative point of view in regard to the way society celebrates the birth of Jesus, or something other than the birth of Jesus. But I was really filled with sadness for a moment, then realized the lack of joy, the anger they felt, was a result of looking negatively at the way the world operates. It is what it is. I was confronted with my own negativity. So I quickly changed my little sermon and addressed the issue. Yes, the world has changed and continues to change. And how we express ourselves is often determined by commercial manipulation. But powerful as it is, 
we Christians don't have to succumb to the pressure of the marketplace. We have an alternative that we, we can remind ourselves of. We just have to remember that what we are celebrating is the joy of the ages. And we can do that and still live in love for our fellow human beings. We don't have to be cynical. We can remind ourselves, this is the day that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We can truly celebrate and even include those other folks in what we do. And for those who really enjoy the way Christmas is celebrated outside the church, that's great. Rejoice. Celebrate. Because the season is a celebration of the night that an angel came to a few simple shepherds and told them about the birth of a Savior, the Messiah, who was the Lord, with the sounds of a multitude of the heavenly host praising God. Now, to shepherds out in the hills tending sheep, that must have seemed a little weird. But the joy that came with that bunch from above must have overwhelmed the peace and quiet of the night. Hearing that joyful sound of adoration sort of seems to have changed the way those shepherds saw their isolated world of grazing sheep. And without question, without question, they left their sheep and their usual routine behind and traveled to that simple manger. They made known what had been told to them by the angel about this child, and all that heard it were amazed. But as far as we know, no one else in the neighborhood celebrated Nothing but the silence of the night and life as usual. So, but today, yeah, Christmas time has become commercialized. But unlike that starry night over 2,000 years ago, Christmas is now widely celebrated, albeit in the ways of today's world sometimes. Some know why the celebration, others have lost sight, but we as Christians haven't. And we need to remind ourselves of the true meaning of the season in order to avoid becoming negative and cynical about the way others are caught up in their revelry. We could be thankful for the sounds of, those re of that revelry and share in the sense of community which comes through mutual celebration. We can change our perspective and realize those other celebrations, those standing in the store kinds of Christmas activities, are an, offer, an opportunity for us to strengthen our own bonds of community. In fact, it's the perfect honor, uh, opportunity for us to share our reason for being joyful with those who don't really understand the significance of this day on which the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We don't, have, we don't have to drop our own joy at the true cause for celebration. We just have to drop our judgmental cynicism and take this opportunity to love our neighbors. Now here in the church, as Father Seth said, we continue to celebrate Christmas for 12 days until the day of Epiphany. You see, although we tend to lump the visits to the manger by shepherds and the visits from the wise men together in our precious and our Christmas cards, they didn't occur at the same time. The shepherds came to see baby Jesus on the night he was born, right? Then they returned to their flocks, which is a good thing because they might have spent the rest of the year chasing down their own nightmare of lost sheep. <coughs> <clears throat> but the wise men were following a star that shone over the place where Jesus was born. Now they didn't have overnight air travel to get there, right? So they had to jump on camels. And camels are not known for their speed, right? Traditionally, the church is allowed them 12 days to arrive. Now their GPS star wasn't apparently too specific either. Because before arriving in Bethlehem, they had to stop in Jerusalem and ask where the special child, the Messiah, was located. What a disaster that turned into. You might remember that Herod was threatened by the thought of a popular leader figure. And since Herod's people didn't know where the child was located, they had all boys, two years old or younger, killed. It seems a bit odd that the search for the world's savior resulted in the death of other children. But at least the ramifications of the incident have become etched in the brain of almost every male subsequently born on the planet. I find myself explaining this to my wife every time she wonders, why do men, why are men reluctant to stop and ask directions? <laughs> we know. <laughs> so right now, theoretically, we're in a time of waiting for the arrival of the wise men. Unlike the rest of the world, we haven't stopped celebrating Christmas. Perhaps we should never stop celebrating Christmas. After all, together with the resurrection, 
Christmas and the resurrection are the most remarkable event since God created the heavens and the earth, then populated the earth with people. The Gospel of John tells us that this child is in fact God in the flesh, yet present in the beginning of the world. John refers to this figure as the Word, or Logos, which can be simply translated as a creating and mediating force. In fact, this Word was the creative power of God. According to John, all things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being through in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. And now, he's become a man, and has a really big job ahead of him. Because according to Matthew, he's going to save his people from their sins. First creation, now salvation. But wait a minute, why on earth would the Word, who was with God in the beginning and was God, end up as a newborn baby? One way of looking at it is uh, the way Paul does in his letter to the Philippians. He says, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God as something to be exploited, but he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. You mean to tell me he did that on purpose? He emptied himself, the status of God, to become man, knowing what he knew about how the people he was responsible for creating actually lived their life, which he had gifted to them. Given the ability to make choices, they chose to act pretty sinfully much of the time, didn't they? And don't we? Actually, life as a human being can be pretty difficult and sometimes painful also. Why would the Son of God want to experience that kind of existence? One thing we can count on is that life offers a lesson in suffering and the guarantee of experiencing some pain. If he truly emptied himself and took on human form, he started experiencing the pain of human existence pretty quickly. He would have cried at birth because that's how human babies get air into their lungs and take on the task of breathing, and it really is uncomfortable not to breathe. He would have experienced thirst and hunger, which are miserable things. And then there would be all the other things that happen to kids as they grow to maturity. Skin knees from running and falling, the psychological, psychological pain of adolescence, learning the weariness of working hard, laboring with his father Joseph, and maybe a smashed finger or two until he gained skill with the hammer, and so forth. All of that, all of those things that happen to us, uh, lay ahead for the Son of God as he lived out human life among us. It's truly amazing, isn't it, that he made that choice for us. He chose to subject himself to those events. But Christmas, Christmas really is a lesson in living in the joy of the event. So for now and in this season, we can just savor the happiness of Christmas. So let's continue to celebrate with Mary and Joseph and the shepherds that came to enjoy the doing. No anger, no judgment of others, just joy of what we know to be true. And experience love for God and our neighbors, regardless of how or what they might choose to celebrate. Let's pray. The gracious and loving God. Thank you for the gift of your son. Thank you for this opportunity to celebrate during this season. We ask that you would help us stay focused on the joy of what we are celebrating here. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen.